All right, everybody, let's talk about big O. So what is big O? It's an asymptotic order of growth. And what is an asymptotic order of growth? It just describes runtime and um, space complexity. as your input size grows. So you may ask, you know, what is runtime? Runtime is actually kind of a very misleading word. It's really just a function. And usually it's denoted like T of N or something. And Rather than describing an actual concrete time it takes for your algorithm to complete, it usually describes how, how many times certain, a certain set of steps need to be executed in order to complete your algorithm. Uh, what is space complexity? Space complexity. That just kind of describes how much space does your algorithm require you may have an extremely um, fast or uh, you know extremely efficient runtime uh, for your algorithm but what if your algorithm requires just an enormous amount of space like space in memory or space on your uh, on your hard drive uh, then maybe that is a, a huge drawback. You, you want something that's both efficient in, in terms of the amount of steps you have to take, but also efficient in terms of the amount of, of space you need to store um, different data or, or different results of calculations in your algorithm. If you run out of space, <laughs> it doesn't really matter how efficient the runtime is or, or whatever. Um, Big O describes the worst case. runtime um, or space complexity. So, you know, you can view it as giving you an upper bound for your algorithm, which is very useful when you're designing algorithms because a lot of the time knowing the worst case is much more helpful than knowing like the the best case or even, you know, the average case, whatever whatever it is you mean by average because Different algorithms can run incredibly different uh, with, with incredibly different efficiencies depending on the inputs. So, worst case is is usually the best way to judge how efficient an algorithm really is. Now, if we're going to look at kind of a, a very formal definition of big O, your runtime t of n is big O of some function f of n if there exists a constant c greater than zero and uh, some n not greater than or equal to zero such that um, for all input sizes uh, n greater than or equal to that n not we have that our runtime t of n is always less than or equal to c times f of n. Now, yeah, that's a lot of math. Um, let's unpack that a little bit. We have a runtime t of n. We have some other function f of n. And we're saying our runtime is O of f of n if there is some constant greater than 0 and some n not greater than or equal to 0. And what these mean is, you know, this is... This wouldn't make sense if this was less than or equal to zero because this would be zero or negative, which doesn't really make sense as a runtime. And then you can't run an algorithm on negative number of inputs. That just doesn't really make sense. So we need a positive number of inputs or zero inputs. And then our runtime is upper bound by some constant number times this function. And uh, our that basically we're saying our runtime t of n is always going to be less than or equal to some constant times f of n 
for all for 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 an n that is always greater than or equal to some n not where n not is greater than or equal to zero so there it is in all of its formal glory